What's going on YouTube? It's your buddy Will from the What's Up in the Sky 37 channel online at www.whatsupinthesky.com and welcome to this edition of Space News. It's been a while since I've done a Space News and I tell you what, I uh, went out, got up early this morning, 4 o'clock, um, actually I was up probably like 3.30, put on the uh, NASA channel and waited for the SpaceX launch. I'm on the east coast of, uh, I'm by Maryland, right by the beach here in Maryland, uh, by Ocean City and uh, Assateague Island, down around that area. And we got, actually, I could see it after the launch. It took about uh, seven minutes for I could see it. And I tell you what, it looked like just a uh, a little little red dot. I'm going to tell you, it looked like a star, probably about the size of a star. It had a trail behind it, and it was just kind of winging its way on up the coast. It was pretty cool, I must say. I got it, I got it in my sight for about two minutes. And uh, I can give you a little bit of it here. I, uh, before I left, I, I hit the record just to film a couple eight, minutes of it. Seven, six, Let's take a quick five, look at it. Four, three, two, one, zero, and lift off of the SpaceX Falcon Pretty cool. 9 rocket. And this was just right. a, a refuel, Continue. basically it's bringing supplies up to the uh, International Space Station. Space Station. It kind of stopped a little bit during the uh, live feed, so I guess a lot of people turned it to live feed because usually that doesn't happen with my bandwidth here. But as that went up, I, I couldn't see that far. That was down. They said if a 500 mile radius, you could see those first boosters. Um, I didn't see it till it was way up in the air and it came up and over. So it was pretty cool. Here we go. Daring spare SpaceX rocket landing test crashes after after successful cargo launch for NASA. It's pretty interesting what they're trying to do here. So, a commercial Falcon 9 rocket built by SpaceX successfully launched a Dragon cargo ship toward the International Space Station early Saturday morning, then returned to Earth, apparently impacting its target ocean platform during the highly anticipated landing test in the Atlantic. The result, close but no cigar, according to SpaceX chief Elon Musk. Um, the Falcon 9 rocket launched into space at 447, and it went right off. 447, it was ready to go, and it was off. Saturday from Florida's Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, kicking off SpaceX's fifth unmanned cargo mission to the orbiting lab for NASA after a four-day delay. The liftoff was originally scheduled for Tuesday, but was pushed back because of an issue with the actuator on the rocket's second stage. Not all the action Saturday was in upward direction. The company also aimed to bring the Falcon 9's first stage down for precision landing on an anonymous an autonomous spaceport drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. The rocket stage apparently hit its target, but a bit too hard. So basically, they're trying to reuse this this rocket each time. And uh, as it came down, it hit the pad or whatever it was supposed to hit, which is pretty amazing that it even hit it. Um, I guess the uh, autonomous part of it is the fact that it is out there uh, probably moving towards it. Rocket made from the drone support ship, but landed hard. Close, but no cigar this time. Loads will fear... Well, for the future, though, well, bodes well for the future. Um, this guy, Elon Musk, is pretty cool. I got a couple more stories about him in here, just one. The ship itself is fine. Some of the support equipment with the deck will need to be replaced, he added. Didn't get good landing impact video. Pitch dark and foggy. We'll piece it together from telemetry and, act telemetry and actual pieces. So the uh, actual spinning of the Dragon part is well on its way into orbit. I think they're going to be able to arrive at the space station on early Monday. Um, the astronauts will grapple it using the Orbiter's Lab's huge robotic arm. They'll bring it on in and they'll get the food, scientific experiments, and spare parts. And uh, I do believe after that it comes on back. So they'll, they'll be sending back a bunch of... Uh, they're going to send back a bunch of different things too. And then the Dragon will come in. I do believe it's going to be landing off the coast in California. Like off the California coast. So I'm going to put this... As always, I put the links to our space news in there. And here's a big one too going on, Opportunity Rover. I tell you, it's it's uh, I haven't I haven't done space news in a couple of weeks, so I haven't been able to talk about this. The old and suffering from amnesia. Apparently, there's some memory problems that's been going on with the Opportunity Rover for a good while now, and uh, they've been doing trying to get the fix together for it. Uh, but it got up to a new point. It's reached a new summit, which is pretty cool. Of course, we're going to take a look at this probably in one of our videos. Has some interesting pieces in it around here because we, you know, we do the anomalous, the anomalous stuff in my channel. If this is your first space news, we got a bunch of new subscribers since my coffin on Mars video hit big. Um, so if you guys are new here, we do space news every once in a while. This is only something I do, uh, you know, once, twice a week. Sometimes even once a month, unless there's a lot going on. So the highest peak of the climb, here we go. NASA's Opportunity Rover has keep on 
keeping well since past its expiration date, and even now it's memory logging and causing problems. It's memory lagging causing problems. The rover's just hit a new milestone in its Mars journey, the highest peak of its climb through the Endeavour crater. NASA calls the view one of the greatest, grandest an opportunities Martian career of nearly 11 years and more than 28.5 miles. It's pretty amazing that little thing's 28.5 miles. When I was at the uh, Air and Space Museum last time, I had a chance to, to see the life-size, you know, the spirit opportunity size rovers plus the Curiosity. And they're still pretty big, even though they're a lot smaller than Curiosity. Um, but here we go. Pretty cool. You can check that out. It raises the American flag there. I got my mouse I don't like. Here, get back to there. Here it is raising the American flag. I thought that was pretty cool. You know, opportunity had NASA had been worried last week. The rover was having trouble with his flash memory. The type that doesn't lose information when the computer is powered down. Because of a fault in the flash memory, probably due to the rover's old age, opportunity kept saving data to RAM instead. And when it powered down every night to store up energy for next day, all the data would disappear. NASA scientists are getting around this by downloading Opportunity's new data to Earth every night before they let it power down, but they're working on fixing the flash memory problem with the software tweak. It's encouraging that the Opportunity was able to make the last two days and the last 174 feet of its climb using NASA's crafty temporary fix for its amnesia. This could be just one of many age-related hiccups to come. It's like you have an aging parent in otherwise good health. Maybe they'll go for a little jog every day, plan a Take tennis each day, but you never know. They could have a massive stroke right in the middle of the night. So, let's see. I bet you if there was some more uh, anomalies up there, there might be some strokes. Actually, Opportunity's done a wonderful job up there. And lately, Opportunity's been sending them stuff more back from, uh, you know, than Curiosity. So, I tell you... Um, here we go. This is actually about that, and they're gonna they're gonna go ahead and do the long distance reach. I'm gonna put this in there. NASA Ready's long distance fix for rovers amnesia. NASA's engineers are planning to send a software fix to the rover has been working on for nearly 11 years. Uh, the Mars rover opportunity has been suffering from a glitch that's causing what NASA scientists describe as memory and data loss. Of course, same thing as the amnesia's last time. So basically, they're gonna use a software fix. This is what's great about these things. They're computers. I mean, and they're basically run on computers. Both I do, I do believe, and uh, you guys can quote me now if I'm wrong. There, both I know the Curiosity has backup systems, and it actually I think is running off one of the backup systems now. But the computers are on there, so opportunity I believe is the same way. Um, so they'll be able to turn it. Like, let's see what they're going to do. The mission can continue without storing the data to flash memory. Instead of storing the volatile RAM, so basically they're just going to switch where it's going to go. So we should find out here soon what's going to go on with it. Hopefully it'll keep rocking and rolling into the new year, keep sending back pictures. Um, some amazing stuff has come back. So, Well, right after, right after my... Uh, my viral, uh, the video went out for basically uh, the coffin on Mars went around. Um, this came out. Has Curiosity found fossilized life on Mars? Now, of course, NASA's come out and already said this is this is pretty much nothing. Even though a scientist came out. See, I'm apparently no scientist then. I'm a ufologist is what they call me when they when they write about me, you know, any, any newspapers and stuff. Um, and I've never called myself that. I guess that's what that's what I, I guess the label they put on me, and then say I put the label on. But that's the news for you. That's the I really find out when these videos go viral how much copy and paste the news really is, and uh, how much uh, it, it's just pretty much made up. A lot of it. You can pretty much say anything about anybody or misquote people, and there's no retractions. There's no nothing. It's happened to me twice now. So time and time again, as we carefully scrutinize the amazing high-resolution imagery flowing to Earth from NASA's Mars rover Curiosity, we see weird things etched into Martian rocks. Most of our times, our brains are playing tricks on us. Of course they are, you know. And other times, however, those familiar rocky features can be interpreted as processes that also occur on Earth. You know why? Always, you know, most of the time, it's just your brain playing trick on you. It's just your brain. You don't see stuff on those Martian pictures. I mean, even though you can pull up pretty much every Martian picture and see some sort of anomaly that shouldn't be there for a dead planet, that's just your brain. It's not the videos you're watching. <laughs> it's it's not the pictures you're looking at. It's your it's you. It's in your head. So, in a new in a paper published in the journal Astrobiology, a geobiologist has related structures photographed by Curiosity, Curiosity as Martian sedimentary rock with structures on Earth that are known to be created by micro microbial life forms. But just because the structures look like they've been formed by microbes on Mars doesn't mean they really were. Um, 
The image in question was snapped by curiosity of the Gillespie Lake outcrop situated in the Illinois Bay area of the Gale Crater that the river arrived on December 17, 2012, on Sol 125 of its mission. It was soon realized that the Gillespie Lake rock is a sedimentary sandstone, which formed from Mars process surface water. Of course, as we know, that's going to have to be under the water for such things. So as such, there are Mike like many likenesses between the rocks found in the yellow knife and sediment rocks here on Earth. For example, the layering of sediment rocks and conglomerates conglomerations contained within these layers led NASA scientists to realize that Curiosity is exploring an ancient lake bed. After 20 years of studying microbial like, microbiology, I always say we go micro, microbially. Sorry, guys, it's been one of those days here. After 20 years of studying microbially introduced sedimentary structures, myths on Earth, Nora Nolf of the Old Dominion University of Virginia turned her attention to Curiosity's observations at Gillespie Lake. During Nolf's analysis of the Mars rock, striking similarities to morphological structures in Gillespie Lake and the terrestrial rocks were found. Um, Gillespie Lake, which has been dated to around 3.7 billion years old, seems to possess its... I love how they can just date something. Let's date to 3.7 billion years old, because that's what we're finding out. Oh, we're doing a... We sent a rover there. We know that already. I don't even know if we know what the real true age of Earth yet. So here's what she came up with. Overlay is a sketch of a photograph um, to assist the identification of the structures on the rock bed surface. I'd tell you what, that's wonderful. Some of the pictures we have blow this away. There's pictures of dinosaur carcasses that have that look like they are fossilized sitting there. All you have to do is search dinosaur on Mars in my videos and you will see it. And this is what they come up with. And they really, and like I said, Basically, I'm going to let you guys read the rest of this because it talks about how this all was formed, she thinks. Um, but here we go. Right at the... Here we go. <laughs> right after this came out, traces of life spotted on Mars, not likely, Curiosity Team says. Intriguing features photographed by NASA's Curiosity rover on Mars probably don't have a biological origin, mission team members say. So it, do, it doesn't matter if it's a scientist. It could be a scientist. It could be a UFOologist or a ufologist. It can be uh, anybody, a Mars hound, a rock researcher. It doesn't matter who you are. If it's not from, you know, if it's if it's in a picture, it's nothing to be proof. There's no proof about pictures. So obviously there could be a Martian or something to walk up to the big, you know, walk up and wave. And I think they'd be, uh, they would say that that's not, you know, that's only a picture. Could be anything. Could be a rock. Study another nerve no geobi geobiologist is a member of the Curiosity team, who's not a member of the Curiosity team, said that the Gillespie Lake features could be consistent with the biological origin, but she stressed repeatedly that it was just a hypothesis, and she didn't regard the structures as proof of past life on Mars. Of course she didn't, because she wouldn't want to lose her jobs, um, or, whatever it, or whatever credibility she has, because that seems what happens to these real scientists who come out a little bit ahead of the... Uh, of the disclosure process, I think that they're working down. So, Curiosity team member also noticed Gillespie Lake structures, which included domes, cracks, and pockets, among other shapes. Said mission project scientist Ashwin Vasada of NASA's JPL. But the rover team arrived at different interpretation. We really don't see anything that can be explained by natural processes of transponding the sand in the water, and the nature of the rock suggested that it was just a flu a fluvial sandstone. So basically, they're just saying that the water did this. So. We do have several members of our team who have always been keen to look out for things that might be caused by biological processes, but there were no reason we felt to explore that site yet. It came down to nothing exceptional from our point of view. That was just cons consequence of erosion of that sandstone. So once again, they're saying it's just your eyes. Um, nothing to see here. So as we go forward into our space news, SpaceX is Elon Musk to reveal Mars colonization, colonization ideas of the year. So... The billionaire and entrepreneur behind the private spaceflight company SpaceX says he will unveil his concept for Mars colonization later this year. In an Ask Me Anything session on Reddit Monday evening, January 5th, Musk told readers that the details of his Mars colonial transporter would be unveiled at the end of the year and that the plane would be from different from the Dragon capsules and Falcon 9 rockets SpaceX is flying today. The Mars transport system will be completely new architecture. Ooh, that's interesting. I'm hoping to present that towards the end of this year. Good thing we didn't do it sooner as we have learned a huge amount from the Falcon and the Dragon. The goal will be to send 100, 
100 metric tons of useful payload, he added. It obviously requires a big spaceship and a booster system, Musk said. This year, SpaceX will also reveal plans for spacesuits that will meet both design aesthetics and utility requirements, Musk noted, although he did not specify where spacesuits would be used. Possibly they could be used to form bases on Mars, bases for future Mars exploration. This guy's really pushing the limit here. Um... Pretty interesting. That talks a little bit about what they were trying to do here. This was before this actually came out, the uh, successful landing today. And here we go, the fresh scar on Mars surface. This is pretty cool here. Um, the planet just took a hit. The image shows a new impact crater at the Elysium Plantia, discovered by the high-rise imager. I, think, I guess how you say that. Um, you can see the very distinct crater rim with the ejecta ejecta that the much darker sorry guys it's like I said, it's been one of those days i'm just having fun today it's saturday at 5 30 p.m football's on after this i'm about to go watch the rest of the game ravens are playing i'm in maryland so i wanted to get this out before i uh set down for football for tonight i got a couple of good ones coming up though for uh some videos so some more anomaly stuff so if you want to get through this watch it i'm going to go ahead we're going to take a better look at this picture in another video but i just wanted to get this on your mind take a look at it pretty cool there's a before and after here too so you uh if you go to the NASA site here, it comes in like that. There's an actual before and after of this. Let's see, the previous CTX image. All right, here's the one, and then there it is right there. So pretty interesting stuff going on on Mars. It's a, uh, it's getting hit by stuff. It's got, <laughs> it's got rovers on there that are starting to die out. You were getting great pictures back. The latest pictures seem to show stuff that look like uh, Egyptian... Uh, it's like the Moai from out on each Easter Island. There's a lot of stuff going on on Mars. So check out the latest videos. Comment below if you got anything, any other space news you want to send me. Will at willforar.net. Come post it on our uh, website. If you go to whatsupinthesky.com, if you join, you can post under there's uh, the news spot. Um, we kept the Badfinger and Ben really keep that up pretty good on there. Uh, ben Evans and Badfinger. A lot of good news on there that I get my news a lot. A lot of times I get my articles right from my website. Well, our website. It's not really my website anymore, you guys. taking it. So I've pretty much handed it over to the, to the world. You guys have uh, been coming in. So come sign up. Much love to you guys. Hope you're having a good weekend. Till next time, What's Up in the Sky 37. Check out the website, www.whatsupinthesky. This is Will Farrar. Peace. Right, that's nice. Shut it out. There we go. Peace.